I'm going to talk about the perspective of applying endovascular techniques. And I briefly will try to outline you the situation which has been currently achieved in Russia. Please look at the screen. These are the latest data of the organizations of economic cooperation and development. Such data are published annually. Please look here. The main mortality causes, 11 million of people died, according to the register. And you can see that 7% of its chemical disease, strokes 30% and 11% of heart failure. The population is known and average 3,360 is the indices. The new cases for nearly half a million per year, total stroke mortality 1,300 per 1 million. You can see that very high disability rate, and these are the latest information. Here you can see that three months deaths reach 35%, please pay attention, which in neurological status is in the group up to 10% and continues having disability reach up to 25%. What are the preconditions for developing intervention assistance? As an evident base of endovascular thrombe extractions, accessibility of the last generation stent retriever in Russia, the maximum indication class that we're going to discuss a lot, developed network for assisting patients with acute coronary syndromes. As I mentioned, centers are developed where in 24 by 7 mode, care is provided and it is concentrated in the same center with patients with acute coronary syndrome and patients with ischemic disease. And of course, it's very important to develop and have the necessary equipment. When we worked on this program by proposals of Veronika Skvartsova, we wanted to create such a model that the endovascular team would be of very high class so that the team would be able to support endovascular procedure, its chemical procedures and neurological interventions simultaneously. It has been achieved and we are very proud of what we've done today. Thrombolysis was the main methods for endovascularizations, but already in 2011, Riddle published a very important paper on stroke where it was proven that everything depends on the clot size. And it is known that the diameter is more than eight millimeters, then the recanalization rate is nearly zero. The faster a patient is delivered to the center, the better is the outcome. You know all these figures, a lot have been achieved recently. 2015 was a revolutionary year when five large-scale randomized studies were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and that formed the foundations for rapid development of this area of clinical medicine. Look what happened in 2015, the first recommendations for issues in the US, the treatment standard for patients. You can see class one of recommendations. Certainly, let me re-emphasize, 2015 was very important. There were a lot of publications. Look what happened. Look at the graph. 2015 was really a breakthrough year in this area of work. And against the background of such publications, you can see that the um, number of centers which performed thrombe extractions increased dramatically. You looked at the data for 2016, the same 
if we look at the um, Euro PCR data, look at the um, recovery after acute ischemic insult, conservative treatment, 15%, thrombolysis 30, standard reverse 48. Look again, this is the data for 2015. Today, over 50% of patients can reach good recovery. These are the data for the Russian Federation. So on X-ray and vascular procedures in our tal pathology and periphery artery pathologies, you can see that we increase the number of procedures by nearly 10,000 per year. You see, however, that the figure is very low. It should be much, much higher. This is the number of stenting, the internal carotid artery in Russia, 2021, within six thousand that are the figures for Russia at the moment. Regarding the balloon angioplasty, of course, it's also performed endovascularly, and you can see the data within 217 procedures performed in over than 50 centers. As for the brachiocephalic stem, it is already proved that this is a very severe pathology and this uh, procedure is pretty efficient. When occlusion stand can be implanted within a very short period of time, the patient's problem can be resolved. Regarding balloon angioplasty and stenting, when we have spinal arteries or lesions, again, you can see that the number of procedures increased heavily, nearly doubled. However, not every stenosis is an indication for open stenting procedures. However, if there are clear indication and its chemical processes in this region improved, of course, the we should proceed with the operation and then the vascular approach is the best. Regarding balloon angioplasty and stenting of subclavian arteries, you can see once again the figures Balloon today is uh, the technology which requires certain improvement. And of course, if there are some uh, indications when you can see the um, uh, balloon, drug-covered balloons, but once again, we have to move from this procedure and standing of subclavian arteries is perhaps the best option. Here we look at the endovascular occlusion of uh, vascular brain vascular aneurysm. Again, you can see the figures, 123 centers are able to perform such procedures in Russia. Look here, the embolization of atrial venous malformations like brain, AVM, and again, even during the pandemic period, you can see the number of centers that perform these operations. So regarding balloon angioplasty of uh, intracranial stenosis in Russia, we go along with the global trend. It's a downward trend. In last year, only 26 centers performed such procedures. Let's look at other countries. In Germany, 11 years ago, 11, 12 years ago, around 2,000 procedures were performed. Look now, it increased nearly tenfold the number of trauma extractions in acute ischemic stroke increased dramatically. What happened in France, again, pretty much the same terrain that was a little bit over than a thousand, now nearly seven and a half thousand, very serious figures. These are the little bit obsolete data for 2019. We believe when we find the new data, the trend will be supported. What's happening in the U.S.? 
2012, 5,000 extractions, and we'll see dramatic increase by nearly 40,000 was reached. If you look at the figures compared with Russia, of course, we have to be much higher. In 2019, we would have to perform at least 18, 20,000 if you looked at the trends characterizing the U.S. Again, figures for Russia, vascular brain trauma instructions with acute damage of uh, brain circulation. So yes, again, there is an upward train, nearly 4,000. Trump admiration, 116 sites, 23,000. Standard retrieval, 70 clinics, uh, 626 cases. Once again, it's clear that the uh, high economic efficiency of trauma instructions is confirmed by the studies that I discussed. It increases the treatment cost because it's intervention. Nevertheless, further reductions of financial burden over social services, more complete and faster recovery of neurological functions, returning the patients from the able-bodied group to work will support economic efficiency. And finally, we can confirm that so far all those issues haven't been resolved completely. I have documents from the Ministry of Healthcare when a resident of the Krasnoyarsk territory approached the president of Russia when he was communicated with the population. And he explained that the situation is pretty nice in Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Tatarstan, but not in his region. And now we have to look at the issues why not all regions of Russia, all these procedures can be performed to the full. The bottom line is we've done a lot and I would like to wish you all successful productive work. This is a very important area of clinical medicine and together we'll move forward in our country. Thank you so much, dear colleagues.